remember, Sergey, and we've been talking about this since the day we first met, okay, a year ago or so. This is a game. It's a game. I can't stress this enough. It's a game. And there are some wonderful people that have responded to many of the interviews that we've done together and many that I've been, not been involved in. And, and they talk about their awakening, right, and, the, and what happened with them. And, and they don't really put it into the context that this is all a game within a school, an earth school, that is now coming to an end. And what happens as it ends is that people start to get activated activated okay remember I, I chose to use that word because activating someone helps them to remember something different about themselves something that reveals to them who they really are what I try to tell people is that the shift the real real shift is what's happening inside of us and they you know people go oh what does that mean you know I'm not sure if I'm feeling that it's I'll get into that a little bit more as well, but it, it's the shift that we're that we're really talking about here, the big reveal that we've been talking about you and me and various other interviews. It's internal and it's big and it's I mean it's big. It's it's the kind of stuff that knocks you on your butt. Um it makes you start questioning everything about your reality. You but know, yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's talk about the the internal shifting because I like I said, I'm reading the messages the uh, my comments and uh, people are like, yeah, I'm even awake in 1990, 1999, 2012, 2000. They're all awakening. And I'm saying, what the hell is this awakening about? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that. All right. All right. Well, listen, I, I, if, um, if you're asking those intense questions that way, I think it's time we get them answered. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, so actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to actually take a moment to uh, shift out of the internal and, and look at the external for a moment. Okay. And, and it, you know, you know that when we start talking, we go everywhere. So yeah. we'll, keep, we'll connect the dots back together on the internal for sure. But here's here's what what's happening it, it, towards the end of the well, we are at the end of the year, right? I mean, October, November, December. And, and we've, we've looked back even in the last three months. I, I believe that people could honestly look at the last three months and say there has been a noticeable difference in the energy in, on this planet, uh, among people, uh, or in general, uh, since the beginning of the year. And that, and that noticeable difference has been somewhere around the midway point of this year. Okay, there were, remember we, we talked about so many energy portals that came in towards the, say, March, April, May period. And I yeah. said, this was all going to set things up for the second half of the year. And what I was saying was that, um, you know, like, for instance, we had the, the solar eclipse and we had the lunar eclipse and, and people were making a big thing out of those things because they were, but they didn't understand why they were making big things out of it. And I said, Sergey, these are big, big portals that are opening up that's going to allow humanity to start getting exposed to four-dimensional, fifth-dimensional energies. And I said, look, you know, this isn't just, it's not woo-woo stuff as they would say here in the States, okay? It's, um, it's, it's, these are codes, these are codes. And, and man, I got to stress this for people who are listening, Sergey, is that, is that we, we got to start moving into a space of consciousness where we start really figuring this thing out with, with a little bit of intelligence, okay? Like, okay, it's cool and it is important to, to mix all the spirituality into all this because spirituality, I may have said this in the past, spirituality Okay, uh, it is is a is a way in which to understand things that we don't we don't have a science for yet. Okay, and, but but it's really part of an intelligence. Okay, and so what's happening? And and I've mentioned this before. Everything that's happening, everything with astrology, the lunar stuff, the the, the solar stuff, the the things with with eclipses, and and then I told you earlier in the year about. Um, the, the event horizon that humanity crossed over, which meant that there was less 3D energy and more 4 and 5D energy. 
What does that have to do with anything? It has to do with what's happening now over the last three, four months and the next three, four months going into 2025. We're starting to see all of this activation. Okay, now some people would, I want to be really, really careful here, Sergey. I want to mention this in two different ways. I'm going to talk about triggering and I'm going to talk about activation. You can say, well, Franco, that sounds like pretty much the same thing to me. I said, well, yeah, it kind of is, but it isn't. Triggering is what is caused by the events that are happening in the outside world, okay, that, that forces you to react to it, okay? Okay, so it's a very, um, it's a very, uh, I don't know why the word comes that's coming to mind. It's kind of a hypnotic effect, okay? You're just constantly reacting, reacting, reacting to the events of the world. Now, okay, so, well, but if you were constantly reacting to those events, then you're constantly supporting or, or reinforcing those events or, or adding fuel to the fire, so to speak, of those events. Whereas when you're activating, okay, and I know that you go, you know, these are just kind of semantics, right, Franco, like playing different words. No, no, no. They're different codes that people need to be aware of, okay? Remember, Sergey, and we've been talking about this since the day we first met, okay, a year ago or so. This is a game. It's a game. I can't stress this enough. It's a game. And there are some wonderful people that have responded to many of the interviews that we've done together and many that I've been, not been involved in. And, and they talk about their awakening, right, and, the, and what happened with them. And, and they don't really put it into the context that this is all a game within a school, an earth school, that is now coming to an end. And what happens as it ends is that people start to get activated activated okay remember I, I chose to use that word because activating someone helps them to remember something different about themselves something that reveals to them who they really are now there's different levels of revealing but what does this have to do with the outside events okay the outside events that are happening now are in direct response to what is happening with people internally there are all of these people, many, 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 many people that we're not even aware of yet, many who haven't even done any exploration of what they're starting to feel, like they're not tapping into the world of, of, of social media, YouTube and stuff, like hooking into your shows and stuff like that, but they're coming, okay, they're coming, and as they're waking up or remembering, they're starting to create an external reaction in the world, which is the stuff that you're now seeing over the last three or four months. And what this is really clearly showing, Sarah, and you could see it here in the US really, really well. We may have talked about this already. This is there's a real, real clear line between the divine masculine and the divine feminine energies. Okay. And this is playing out all over the world. In many of these elections that you're talking about, okay, there is an aspect of femininity and, and masculinity that are at play here. I mean, it can't be any more clear than here in the United States. And I have to make it also clear, okay, and this is kind of a long-winded answer, but Sergey, the, the, the elections here in the U.S., yes, there is a man running, and yes, there is a woman running, but that doesn't mean necessarily that it is a gender issue of energy. Okay, you know this from everybody that you've been interviewing. The divine masculine and the divine feminine energies are what in many, say, prophecies have been, have been at play here now for, for, well, it's been at play for a long, long time, but it's now that they're coming together. And I don't want to use the word clash, but because they're not, that the whole idea is that they're going to start to integrate together. And so in, in these upcoming elections, not to mention the elections, man, I mean, there's some stuff, there's some, there's some real heavy stuff happening right in your backyard, almost not that far away. You know, there's wars that are being waged and new wars that are being waged. And you're seeing that there's this, this, this sort of like rush of masculinity just flowing through, through the surface. I mean, 
it's been there, but everybody can feel it. Everybody can feel like the masculine energy is, is, is literally kicking and screaming its way out the door. Okay. And it's going to take a lot of energy to push it out. And there's going to be a lot of, well, let's just say, okay what they would call uh, collateral damage, so to speak, because of this, okay? There's, there are a lot of people that are gonna be impacted by this, but remember, 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 this is a game. So the question of the day, Sergey, is for those people who are watching this interview, is what do you do with those events, okay? So what I mean by that, are you gonna react to them? Like we were just talking about a few minutes ago, where I said, if you react to things, you're going to keep things moving in the in in the form of a divine masculine energy. You're going to keep supporting it, or are you going to start to create from it and start supporting the divine feminine energies in terms of trying to change the outcome of that world by or the outcome of those events by what you're doing in your world for yourself? Are you looking at things positive or negative? Because that will change the outcome in a lot of these races which is kind of hard to, to, to believe that you have that kind of power, but you do. It's your game. You get to choose how these outcomes occur, but not if you're hypnotically looking at these events and going, here we go again, 40, 50 races, and here's the same old, same old. It's not the same old, same old. I know like in just a few months ago, there were some elections in South America, divine feminine, divine, ener divine masculine energies were there. The biggest one here in the US. It, this is going to be very, very, very powerful shifting kind of energy that is going to dictate what humanity is going to do in 2025 and over the next five to seven years. As I told you, that's the timeline right now. So are the outside events affecting the inside, the internal? No, again, events are a reflection of our internal events or vice versa. So <laughs> I know I made a note. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to cut that down. Okay. So are the internal events a reflection of the external events or is vice versa? The external events are affecting the internal. That is an excellent question, Sergey. And I, I'm telling you that time in the, in the Far East really has helped you becoming, you came back a smarter guy. Something is happening to you. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, so that's an awesome question because this, Sergey, this really is where people are getting stuck, okay? Where people are getting stuck is that they, they feel, okay, that the outside events are impacting their life, okay? Where they, to the, to the extent that, that they feel the chaos, they feel the, the negative energy, and they feel feel like they have to do something about it. Maybe not yet, but somewhere down the road, they feel compelled to do something about those events, okay? Like they came here to do something to change the world, you know, that expression, okay? So they focus too much on the outside events. Understand, it's really important that people understand that the outside events, the reason why the outside events are happening, the wars, the the turmoil, the it's not just the human stuff, but it's also the you know the environmental and ecological stuff. There's there's destruction and and, and stuff going on all over the place because of the weather. Okay, that these outside events are happening because all of that energy is being pushed up to the top and getting pushed out of this dimensional energy to make room for the 4D, which is the divine feminine, and 5D energies, which is what I refer to as the God consciousness, those energies must come in and are coming in because people are starting to remember or wake up. They push those energies out, but then they look at those energies and they go, oh, you know, the world is going cuckoo, right? I like to call it cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It's just a little expression I have. They say everybody's going cuckoo. Well, yeah, everybody's going cuckoo because all of this negative energy is being pushed out into the surface. And it's because of what people are doing to remember who they are. But if they start to focus too much on the negativity, then they get caught back in the loop of the game. 
and then all of a sudden it has a reverse effect. And why is this important? Okay, because, well, for the obvious, but I'm going to be more specific. There is an event that will happen when humanity splits between third dimension and fifth dimension, okay? And this has been referred to in some circles as the three days of darkness, okay? And the three days of darkness have to do with when 5D, 5D, okay, becomes the dominant, the, the not the dominant energy, like not like 5149, but when it becomes the overwhelming energy of this planet, this is sometimes hard for people to relate to, but what happens is the Earth starts to starts to split in two, okay? And this is already happening, Sergey. This has been happening for a while now, all right? But what happens is that when when the Earth splits, okay, like like this, okay, these are two dimensions, and people go, wait, 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 wait a minute. We're, what are we? Third dimension or fourth dimension or fifth dimension? And I'm going to tell you that as your consciousness continues to rise, you're going to be in both dimensions. Okay. And I may have mentioned this before, Sergey, but I'll be. I, I, it's important that I clarify something. There is a biblical, a biblical um, expression called "to be in this world but not of it." Okay. And what that means is that you are physically here in 3D. But from a consciousness standpoint, you are not here anymore. It's really hard for you to be in this three-dimensional world because you feel, and this is where I was telling you before we got on, that it starts to become very mystical and magical, okay? This is where you start to not only feel that you're in two worlds, but you actually start to develop more of your supernatural, what we would call supernatural abilities, your six senses. All of those things start to really, really pick up. I mean, it's like a, it's like a crazy Harry Potter movie, okay? And and because you're getting your all your senses back online, okay? You're you you have as a divine intelligence so many abilities, you know, to to morph into to anything to to integrate your consciousness you, you know so many things but you don't have them at 3d but now you're developing them in in 5d while you're still here in 3d okay so hold on to that thought so the earth starts to split okay there's two dimensions at play here you keep going back and forth between both of them it's a feeling sergey i it's hard to describe it, but it's a feeling that is not of this world where you can feel and start to start to have these experiences. It's hard to describe to people, but it's going to happen to everybody. All right. So you're so these these two worlds start to spread out, but they're held on by these tethers. OK, and these tethers allow people to ascend into 5D over this time. The three days of darkness is when that last tether splits. And when that last tether splits, the two worlds split completely forever, okay? In chemistry, okay, in chemistry, there is the periodic tables of elements, of elements, okay? You familiar with those? You know, the ones that have all the magnesium, copper, zinc, all that kind of stuff, yeah, okay? Yeah, I remember those, yeah. At the end, you know, I was terrible at chemistry, okay? But Me too. I, me too, I mean, I'm, but I'm, yeah, I remember I'm, the chart. Yeah, yeah, I remember the chart, but that was about it. I didn't care about it. But the last, last two or three chemicals, the last elements of that chart, have to do with with um, the separation of energy. Okay, and when the separation of energy occurs, and one of those elements is a is a is a man made element. Okay, but when the separation occurs, when you have two dimensions to separate. Okay. It creates a seismic, huge explosion, like a like an atomic bomb, a hydrogen bomb, but now multiply it by a trillion, a billion. Okay, there's no such word as a billion, but that's how big it is. Okay, and so what happens is it causes a flash. Okay, it's that big that it will cause a flash throughout 3D. Okay, and it's not a blinding flash, but it's a flash that you're going to see it, and you're not going to know exactly where it came from. People speculate it's from the sun. No, it's going to come from everywhere. Okay, and when when that flash happens, it's going to be pretty fast, and you're going to feel the flash, and you're going to you're going to feel like something shifted big time, and everything is going to go dark for three days. Okay, literally like linear three days. Okay, 
And in those three days, humanity is going to go in two directions. The ones who who stay back will experience it as, as three pretty chaotic days, okay? The ones who ascend will wake up, will go to sleep. Literally, it will be like they went to sleep and they will wake up and they will wake up in 5D, okay? Now, this chaoticness that happens before, during, and after is what we are stepping into right now. We're stepping into that period now where there's going to be nuttiness, weirdness, chaos, disorder, okay? It's going to feel scary for many people, but if you, if you get sucked into it, you are actually going to continue to support your presence in it. You have to, you have to look at it as what is happening from an evolution cycle of consciousness and, you're, and look at it as the beginning of 5D energy, which then allows you to raise your consciousness into that space. Yeah, it's like if you react, you reinforce the, the event. Exactly. exactly. You're reinforcing yeah. it. You're reinforcing it. And I've been saying this from the beginning that many, 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 many of the people on this planet, okay, we talked about this the last time, are not here to ascend, okay? Ah, you kidding me. That sounds horrible. No, it's a game. I'm going to keep stressing it throughout our, our interview here because it's important that people understand that the ones who are the ones who are feeling into this, okay, Sergey, they're the ones that are that are remembering. They may not remember a lot. They may just be remembering how they started to wake up five or ten or fifteen years ago. But they're here to fully, fully remember who they are, okay? And they're the ones that are going to keep ascending in consciousness. The other ones. Nothing wrong with what's happening on the other ones. It's a game that is finishing up. And that portion of the game is the one that is going to stick around in 3D because you're not going to be able to change this whole thing that's going on on this planet. People you know, keep believing that if they are consciously awakened, they can change 3D here. 3D is 3D is 3D is 3D. You're not going to change the events here. You're not here to change the events here. You're here to use the events like the three days of darkness, okay, to help you remember what it is that you came here to do, which is to remember. You came here to remember. That's it. You, yeah. You're here to remember that you're here to remember, okay? And, and that's hard, that's hard Sergey, because people are just tr struggling right now. I will you know, use that word. They're getting all these wild things happening to them and then they look out into the world and go the world is going crazy everybody's fighting with each other more more and more of that but that's all a sign that the game is ending because people are waking up it's a proportional thing the more people start to remember the crazier 3d gets it's just the way it works so let's go a little bit to the external events because a lot of people are curious about that okay Let's say if the appointed government wins, by the appointment government, we know which one is the appointed one. Then you think it's going to be some kind of real chaos, chaos, or it's going to be like a revolution in the country, in America or around the world as well, because America is affecting everybody else. It is. It is. Okay. Um, Again, so so here here's the big here's the big thing for people to understand and to know and to and to and to do something about it because because people can't do something about what's going to happen over the next thirty to sixty days with all of these elections. Okay, I've been asked this question kind of similar to what you just asked. What happens then? What happens? Okay, because some people have very strong opinions as to well, if this group wins over this group then all oh, that means it's going to be horrible okay and everything is going to go crazy there's some truth to this okay because the whatever whatever group is representing the divine masculine in the way that it has been for centuries if not millennia okay whatever group that represents the divine masculine in that way if they win it's going to create a certain type of effect and I'm going to go I'm going to go out of my way to say this and and I'm going to be very careful about this okay 
it will create a much stronger negative effect, okay? And I'm trying to be careful not to imply that it's good or bad. I'm just saying negative, okay? If it, but it doesn't matter. So here's the thing that people need to understand. It, if, if they want to survive the chaos, okay, all right, they're the ones that will create the chaos or not, okay? People don't understand that, I'm going to go back to this, Sergey. People have a hard time understanding that they are in their own game. You're in your own game, Sergey. I'm in my own game. Others are in their own game. We come together to, to have like these integrated moments, which I believe we talked about the flower of life, how that whole symbol represents two parallel realities to come together, okay, mm -hmm. for a moment in, in time, okay? People need to become aware that they are the navigators of their own game. So if they, if they are looking at an election and the election turns out to be one that they feel is going to create a negative, powerful negative charge that might cause a revolution, okay, then they're, and they fall into the fear of that, then as you pointed out earlier, they are creators. We are all creators. We are all gods. We will support then that trigger, that reaction that will continue the 3D effect that will be very powerful. The way I describe it, Sergey, is that we will either, one way or the other, we're going to get to 5D, okay? But here's the thing. Do you want to do it really painfully or do you want to do it really you know, less painfully? And you say, well, what does that mean? Like, depends on who wins or who doesn't win? No, it depends on how you respond to it. If you respond to whatever happens to the outcome, I'm going to be very specific here. And I usually don't, okay? But I'm going to be very specific here in the United States, okay? Okay, there are, there are both sides will say that either party can be, can be terrible for the country, okay? Um, there is a sense that, that, it really just depends on who you're talking about, but there's a sense that one party clearly represents the divine masculine, okay? And in the way the divine masculine has always been, very aggressive, okay? Very um, confrontational, okay? And then there's another aspect, the divine feminine, all right? Which has, I'm not saying it's a beautiful, like beautiful fluffy energy because it also has some divine masculinity in it too, but, but you can clearly see the difference, okay? And, and some people say the divine masculine wins, okay? It's, it's going to create chaos, okay? And there's plenty of reason to believe this in the United, and if it happens here in the United States, it's going to, it's the, the effects will, will be felt around the world, okay? Yeah. If you fall into the sort of trap of going, this is it. It's over. Okay. This all chaos is going to happen. Then your world, your game will be very chaotic, very chaotic. And you will, and you, the individual player that is playing your game will suffer through that. You'll use that chaos to eventually help you to remember who you are. But it's kind of like, it's, it's like um, having a child without taking any of the medication, whatever, you know, the, it's horrible that I can't remember, but right now I'm drawing a blank. The, um, uh, la 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 la. <laughs> you know what I mean when you when you're having a child with with um, my goodness gracious. Do you remember the? <laughs> there are probably women here that are listening. They're going, lad, two guys. They don't they don't even know. You know what they, the um, oh you know without medication, painkillers, whatever you want. To so we haven't birth without painkillers. Yeah, it's like that. I mean, you're either going to experience that event with some help, some grace, or you're going to experience it with a lot of pain, a lot of pain. You don't have to do pain. No matter who wins, you don't have to do pain. This is part of the game. You have to prove to yourself that you can see beyond the negative and positive and look as a creator to change the outcome of the game within you, within you. Does that make sense, Sergey? This is like a dream. It's like you're having a bad dream. And, and you have to choose whether you're going to be scared or you're going to just go, no, I don't like that. I'm going to get out of this dream. You know what? That's what I'm trying to get at. You're trying to change the frequencies of the game. 
If you don't, you're going to fall booby trap right into the game and you're going to make it way more painful no matter what the outcome of this next election is. That's what I keep trying to tell people, whether it's the U.S., whether it's in Europe, whether it's whatever's happening in the Far East, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening in Africa, South America. There's just so much stuff going on. If you get impacted in 3D by seeing everything negative, you are going to reinforce that. It doesn't matter who wins. Does that make sense? Yeah, it actually does make sense. But it's everything in life is like that. Franco. I mean, the way we react, we build our own reality. <clears throat> Excuse me. I told you before that when I start talking about this, I'm getting, I'm getting, you know. Yeah, that's uh, right. You do. You always get that. <laughs> I always get that. But when, normally I never, when I, when I talk with you, something is happening here. I'm moving into the 5D very quickly here. I love it. I love it. That's, that's actually a very, that's a good, good it, vibrationally in your throat. If you are talking or trying to move into 5D, you will get clogged up here for a brief yeah, moment. It, it might be. Yeah. So you see, yeah, it's all about reaction. How do we react to the events, to the, our life and everything? This is how we perceive our life. So the same thing is, uh, is election with everything else. I think... Y yeah. You know, Sergey, that's exactly right. It is everything that happens in your life. And this is why it's important that people take a step back now, realize who they are. And when I said this last time, 2025, the big reveal, the biggest reveal that's going to happen is that millions upon millions, 10 millions, hundreds of millions of people are going to start to wake up, to start to remember. They're going to start asking the questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What's this reality, the nature of this reality? Okay, and those answers are not going to come from out there. They're going to come from a relationship that they have already established with themselves through their intuition, their inner voice, their gut feeling, because these are parts of your way of communicating with your higher consciousness that is going to help you to start realizing that all of this craziness that is happening on this planet is happening for a purpose. It's happening for a reason. And it's happening because it it's time now for everybody to remember who they are and accept that the new energies that are coming in are divine feminine and divine child. And those energies have to mix in to balance this earth cycle, this earth school, so people can ascend into a higher dimension. Now, again, a lot of this stuff sounds a little like it could be woo-woo spiritual, a new age and stuff. It has a lot of intelligence to it. We're in a very, we're in a very powerful game, okay, where we have to remember the key to this game, to win this game, is to remember that you're in a dream, okay? Yeah. And if you don't remember that, you're going to just be chasing your tail forever and ever. Not really, because this game is going to end one way or the other in the next 12 years, so... Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned intuition, which is a very common word to everybody, but you see how it rhymes, intuition and in tune. Yeah. When you are in tune with yourself, your intuition is activated. Exactly. You're, you're, this is, and this is what I'm talking about, Sergey, that this is the big reveal. This is the big, uh, yes, yes, yes. We're going to be having big reveals about UFOs and about extraterrestrials and about what's happening in, in Antarctica and all the all these new discoveries that, that, that we have had over the last five, 10 years with all these ancient civilizations and, and pyramids that are popping up all over the world and in oceans and stuff like that. We're going to get those kind of things. We're going to get other types of reveals, okay? So many other types of reveals are going to happen. But the biggest reveal that we're going to experience individually is that one day you're going to be walking down the street, one day you're going to go to sleep one night, and you're going to wake up and you're going to go, what, what, what is going on here? You know, you're literally going to start asking the simple questions. There's got to be something more here because I'm starting to feel it inside. I'm starting to feel whatever it is I'm feeling. I'm feeling it inside and I can't just push it aside. I don't want to push it aside. It makes sense to me to keep digging inward. And that process, that inner process, is what's going to really raise consciousness on this planet very, very fast. And it doesn't have to require everybody to remember exactly who they are, but they'll start to listen to their intuition 
and it's going to be off to the races. That's how it began with me. That's how it begins with pretty much everyone that I have been, you know, students of mine or other people that I have talked to throughout throughout this whole time. And so that, that's the that's the big thing. The big thing is that if you don't listen to your inner inner voice, start having that relationship, which you will. I promise you, we will. People, you know, some people who listen to this kind of conversation go, oh, that's all a bunch of whatever. I am telling you, I am telling you, it's going, it's it's happening right now. It's going to get really, really in, in, in a very good way, very intense starting in 2025. But all of this stuff that's happening here in the next three, four months, including the the, 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 the three days of darkness, that that doesn't happen for a little while. But it is part of the consciousness of humanity that humanity is now becoming aware of this because that is the final, final event that happens before the school, the, the school ends in terms of splitting from 3D to 5D. That will probably not happen yet for several years, but it's a big, big event, big, big, big event. Yeah, you mentioned that we're going to have contacts with aliens and UFOs. And I, I had an interview recently. Actually, I was in the Philippines too when I've done that. I was uh, with Bashar, Daryl Anka. Oh, yeah, Daryl Anka. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I had an interview with him. I was still, I was still there, also from a hotel, like um, you know. And he like, and I asked him what's going to happen the next like few years. What we should anticipate? He said, he said the same thing you said right now. He said we're going to have contacts with the aliens. This is what Bashar said. Big time, and, big time, because. I, I don't really, I know uh, Daryl, not personally, but we just did like a documentary together and he was in, in the in the, in the the documentary, I was too. And I know that he uh, talks about it um, from a different perspective because he channels Bashar. a different, Bashar, he, right, yeah. he, ha he channels Bashar. It's not all that different in that um, the way that I look at the extraterrestrials, the, 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 the um, what do you call it, the Galactic Federation, the things of that nature, is that those are all part of, they are all part of the game. They're characters in the game, very sophisticated, just like if you were to play one of these digital or virtual reality games, there are all these various narratives that are happening in the game. And one of them is that there are these, uh, these, these extraterrestrial, these light beings, the, what I call dimensionals, okay, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth dimensionals, that are here to assist humanity to to remember that they don't they don't appear to everybody right away because their energies are so high that we as a human race would not be able. Meaning, when I say human race, I mean our awareness is still not up there yet. We would we would not be able to handle. The energy that they would that they would offer us, and because their energies are seventh, eighth, ninth dimensional energies, so it creates it creates an imbalance in our consciousness that often is more hurtful than helpful, and they're so they're waiting for us to raise the, the consciousness of the planet or of ourselves individually, and when that happens, which it is starting to happen, um, you're going to have those kind of connections, and they're going to be pretty big. I mean, they're going to be. Like the movie, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Three uh, um, Close Encounters. This is an old one. It's an old baby. But it's that kind of stuff. It, it's yeah. going to be huge. Yeah, and talking about people who are not ready to see that, you remember we spoke about Avatar, the movie Avatar last time, and yeah. I'm going to mention that again. The director of the movie, he had the screenplay like 15 years ago before he produced the movie. He had it ready, but he didn't wanna, he didn't want to produce it until the technology is ready. But I think he was not, he didn't want to produce it until people are ready to perceive the information. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because because um, you know from some conversations that I've had, and I may have said it in one of these interviews, I'm, I am working on several projects. That's where I've been traveling. And I'm working on projects that, that um, that were 10 years or 12 years ago almost impossible to do because yeah. the technology wasn't there the consciousness wasn't there it wouldn't have been as impactful but now the the, the consciousness is there now for people to 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 receive it and if nothing yeah. else in a very playful way so 
you know, the, some of the initial projects I'm working on developing communities and things of that nature that are, are going to launch here very soon would not have been possible in, to be received um, even three, four, five years ago. It, and the consciousness wasn't there and the technology wasn't there. The intelligence wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's fast, fast happening. But the thing that people get stuck on, Sergey, is that they constantly are getting stuck on the chaos piece. They constantly get stuck on the chaos piece and they go, how, how is this going to help the world? How is all of this going to help the world? It seems like the world is out of control. You have to remember that this is just part of the game. There are two worlds now in play, the third dimensional world, the fifth dimensional world. And what connects those two worlds? Your awareness. Your awareness is like a consciousness portal between the two worlds. If your awareness goes and rises into 5D, if you accept the divine feminine energies and the divine child energies and the, in, a, in a softer version of the divine masculine, the paternal aspects of the divine masculine, your consciousness is going to go through the 4D portal and into 5D and you're on your way. That if you keep getting stuck with the chaos of 3D, you're going to be stuck in the chaos of 3D all the way until the end and you're going to make it very painful for you to get into 5d you'll get there but it's going to be extraordinarily painful people get stuck in that part sergey even after interviews like this people say i've been you know this is happening that's happening but the world's this the world's that or even the ones who go ah you know this you know these guys are talking all bunch of this stuff but the world is going cuckoo you know you're not supposed to be focusing on the cuckoo part you're supposed to be focusing on you you and only you that's how you get out of this game and then you can help out you can help yeah. the rest of the game so everybody's going to get there one way or another some will get it voluntarily voluntarily and some will get there kicking and screaming oh man they're, they're, <laughs> yeah they'll get there and they're going to get they're going to get kicking and screaming and their butts are going to be given to them you know i mean it's they don't need to do that but they will do it because they they will desire to go through it the hard way you don't need to go through it the hard way anymore okay i it's not that you and i are talking about things that are so disconnected from the world but but here's the thing sergey the world has been like this for a long long time okay and the reason it's been like this for a long, long time is because every so often, uh, people, sometimes individuals, sometimes people would come into this world and, and, and remind us of who we are, and we wouldn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't listen. And so then we, we take the, their teachings and we distort their teachings, and, and, and then we use them to make, make even more problems of the 3D world. And it's, it, it's not... It, it's it's not effective. This 3D world will never change. It's part of a game that's programmed never to change. What will change is you. You can change. Your yeah. consciousness can change. If your consciousness changes, it will raise frequencies. Hey, look, this isn't woo-woo stuff, Sergey. This is this is quantum physics. This is astrophysics. This is physics, physics, chemistry. You name it. All of these sciences, okay, are starting to catch up to the fundamentals of what is happening in other dimensions, okay? This isn't stuff that, that you know, like movies, like, you know, pie in the sky stuff. We're just trying to catch up to, and this is our conversations about AI. We're just trying to catch up to who yeah. we really are, and we're doing a pretty good job of it. Not everybody's going to remember all this. Not everybody's supposed to remember all of this. It's only those that came here to remember and wake up and ascend. And that's where we're at. We are right in the thick of it now. The craziness that's happening in the last two, three months, the craziness that you're going to see over the next three, four months and into 2025, it's all been said some way, shape, or form. It's all been said. But the stuff, the only difference is that now people are starting to realize that they can make a huge impact in the game by remembering who yeah. they are. So this craziness you're talking about it's a good thing for people yes. who are ready to awaken and are ready to move into the 5d reality as less painful as possible bam right there sergey bam okay we have to we have to say that one over and over again okay, okay. sergey that's the what's that's the key right there yeah. right there yeah as less painful as possible okay yeah. 
as less pain because we love pain we are told in this world in this world that's based on fear that no pain no gain okay no pain yeah. no gain that is not true okay if you choose you can get beyond the pain the fear but you have been so so i'm going to use the word here sergey because because people will use it to explain how people like us or the interviewers that the, the interviewees that you have they're they're trying to brainwash people and stuff like no no we are brainwashed <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're trying to we get have, off, get out of the brainwashing yes. right now. <laughs> yeah, that's that is the irony of all of this. The irony is that P, I've had this happen, Sergey. Look, I don't talk about you know. Oh, you you know me. I'm not talking about hey, follow me and you know and see a different world and I'm this and I'm that. I'm just saying, hey, everybody, guess what? You've been in a dream. All right. There's a lot of a lot of evidence to point to this now okay you're in a dream and we're not talking about just the near-death experiencers but there's a lot of research now being done in a lot of these areas you're in a dream it involves parallel realities third you know uh, uh, parallel universes multiverses all this time galactics and all this. you're in a dream but in that dream you have been conditioned which is the fancy way that i describe in the book of saying i call it social conditioned okay Okay, but in, in the book, I really want to say you've been brainwashed since the very day that you were born. Okay, you've been brainwashed into believing who you are. And the yeah. irony is that people like us come along and we start saying, hey, you know, through our near death experiences and through channeling, through all of this stuff. And we're not the first to say this. There have been a lot of great teachers and masters yeah. who have talked about this. Okay, we are gods. We are gods. Okay. And oh, dang, you must be brainwashed. Nah, no. <laughs> no. You remember, Franco, we spoke about Kali Yuga last time in one of our interviews. I mentioned that. That's from the Indian Hindu manuscripts and Bhagavad Gita and so on. Mm -hmm. So they say that right now is the end of Kali Yuga, the worst Yuga in, hu in humanity's cycle. And mm -hmm. it's the beginning of Dvarapa Yuga. I'm not sure. People who know that, they're going to criticize me here, but I think I'm right. <laughs> yeah. So this is what is happening if you go by that philosophy right now. Exactly, the, like you said, we're moving from 3D to 5D, and this is the breaking point right now. Yes. I think what up, Kali Yuga started around the Christ era, about 2,000 years ago, maybe yes. a little bit early, something like that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so great segue, Sergey, because... You're making a great point here that that this is something that has been in one way, shape, or form said throughout the course of human history through many, many different philosophers, teachers, ideologies, religions, you name it. This isn't just stuck with one particular type of thought process, okay? Um, this is the end of this game and i remember when i first started to interview and talk about this i was one of the only people that was talking about saying we are at the end what makes the difference in whether or not we're going to do this somewhat painfully or somewhat i want to i'm not going to say pleasurable but it is pleasurable if you go inward and you start to remember it becomes very magical okay um, but the choice is ours. And you say, well, what do you mean? It's not a revolution, Sergey. And this is the part that I'm going to, you know, I, I, my, I really feel so drawn to, to talk about this over the next several months, maybe longer, is that there is this sense that people are getting, not everybody, but some people are getting that because this is the end of the divine masculine era that the divine feminine is coming in and is going to in a sense suppress the divine masculine okay this is not a revolution this is not about suppression how how everyone has been suppressed i'm going to say yes 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 women in particular have been suppressed but remember it's important. It's this is a frequency 
This is a frequency, the Christ consciousness, the Buddha consciousness, okay? They're both the same thing, two different perspectives, two different worlds, okay? But they're the same thing. This is about the introduction of a new frequency in this planet that mixes in the divine feminine, the divine masculine, and the divine child together as one. This is not about women versus men. Okay, this is not about suppression, how women are going to necessarily come in and push men down, you know, push them aside or whatever. Men and women have an equal amount of masculinity and yeah. femininity and child in them. It's not about how one controls the other. It's about the beautiful blend that now has to happen as a result of this. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone who carries and uses the divine feminine energies, which, by the way, is also referred to, again, as the Christ consciousness or Buddha yeah. consciousness, okay? Anyone who carries that and uses it in the way that those frequencies are meant to be used will be supported by the game. But there are many, and I want to stress this, there are many who believe that this means that it, the days of suppression are going to go away from the women to maybe the men and they're going to be taking the back seat and they're going to be they're going to know what it felt like to be suppressed i have started to see that and that is really just the divine masculine masked in the divine feminine in other words you're using divine masculine energies to to respond to this new energy that is the divine feminine and and that's not going to work it's not going to create any harmony it's going to create more harm than harmony and that is not going to be supported at all and what we need is now harmony between those three energies and yes women will be the ones who have the genetic makeup that's already activated to lead the way for sure for sure i mean here we are two guys talking about this but i have to explain that it's not an ev it's not a revolution that's going to happen here. It's an evolution that is going to happen here. And that means that it's a beautiful balance between the three frequencies that are going to happen. The, the divine feminine is going to come in and it's going to clear things out like it's doing right now in the world. But once that happens, everything comes into resonance. And yeah. it will be a beautiful balance. Now, talking about creation, I have a tricky question here about creation. And I asked, I had, uh, I had Dr. Moody yesterday, day before yesterday, Raymond Moody. I had him, yeah, I you got, well, you're, you're, getting some, you're getting some big hitters these days now, huh? I asked him about the creation as well. So here's my question to you. Do you think creation actually was created or that there was no creation? This creation has always been here. So say that again, because you broke up just sure. enough that I, I didn't get the full question. So the question is just about creation. It always says, okay, God created uh, the earth in seven days or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sure. My idea, I might be wrong. I'm just telling you my personal <laughs> idea that the creation has always been here, always. And it always be here. It was never created. Because we cannot conceive that probably, because we have a finite mind, and we know we got to got to have beginning, we got to have the ending. How can something always be here? So there is right. no. If it's always been here, there is no creation. I'm going to start. I'm, I, I'm, you tell me when I'm going to start to call you the Buddha or whatever. Those are deep okay. questions, man. No, no, no. I'm just. This, this might be completely wrong. I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. Sometimes. No, no. There's no right or wrong. So, okay. so here, here's the thing. Um, this gets to. Um, okay. So there has always been energy, always been energy. Yeah. Okay. And, and sometimes when we talk about energy, people get a little bit maybe distracted or maybe they don't, maybe a little more disinterested because it starts to get a little bit sciencey here, okay? But there's always been energy. And, and so I, in a lot of the stuff that I talk about with students is understanding this, it's understanding where we exist inside that field of energy, okay? And 
well, somebody could argue, well, we exist everywhere. Oh, well, I like that. I like that. Okay, because at least that somebody who says that now starts to understand that we are more than just the body. Okay, we are more than just the body. Really important to understand that. Okay, we are consciousness playing inside of a body. Okay, but we're way more than the body. Okay, so what? What does this have to do with creation? In, in 3D, and now this goes into different levels too. This could be 9D too, but in, in everything, there exists the stillness. Okay, and the stillness is a, is a for lack of better words, is a spatialness to our consciousness. Okay, and we exist in the stillness all the time all the time okay now talk about a concept that people really will have trouble putting their arms around or their heads around because because we don't really know what the stillness is and we don't know the importance of the stillness but i'm going to make it very simple okay for this discussion and i go into this in much more detail in some of the teachings that i do but for this discussion in 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 the space, in the space, the, the let's call it the metaphysical space of everything. Okay, there exists, there exists stillness, and stillness is that space. Okay, uh, where energy exists. Okay, here's what I always say: it's the space where everything is before anything ever was. Okay, what that means is that that's the space where where all energies exist. All energies exist everywhere, no matter where. So this gets to your point. Does it, has it always been there? Yes, it's been there in the form of energy, always, forever and ever and ever, okay? But what is different when we start talking about creation, okay, is that you are taking those energies and you are shaping them into something for the purposes of like say in 3D to create schools, these kind of schools where this is not the only school that exists in in everything yeah. there are many 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 schools yeah when you use that energy you are taking the everything is which is energy all possibilities all the time everywhere and you're creating with that energy so that it's the space where everything is before anything ever was before the creation occurred okay what exists there consciousness what is consciousness you what is you and consciousness god therefore you are god okay simple very simple okay you're right sergey creation in, in the form of energy in the form of consciousness has existed since before we even have this linear term of time yeah. okay it still exists to this point there is still space out there there's what i call the field and everybody calls it the, the everybody has this thing about the field being like the matrix yes there is that field but there is a field of energy that exists beyond what we would know as the divine intelligence god creator source it's like the, that ball sits on this field and yeah. it's so and it sucks up all of this energy to keep creating 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 this field is forever it goes forever i mean it doesn't have an end okay yeah. and that field has both consciousness energy in it and what I call the void. It's energy that hasn't, that is there without consciousness yet. And the reason I, I guess I can explain this is because I not only saw this in my near death experience, because nobody's ever asked me this, this kind of question before, but I've also had this in various channeling experiences as well. When it is the void of energy before any, any consciousness has even existed yet there. It's, it's infinite, infinite. Okay, there is no beginning or end. When it comes to creation, there is a beginning. Okay, there is a beginning. It's taking that energy and creating something with okay. it. Okay. Okay, so it's not an either or, it's both. All right. Does that make sense? Well, it's not completely, <laughs> but. <laughs> Oh, I love it. When, I, I know when I finally got your hair going curly and stuff, man. I know, yeah. Well, as long as my viewers understand it, that's that's what we need. You know, I don't, I, it's, that's important for me to understand it, you know. I'm just asking questions. No, no, you. that's cool. I, I mean, you you get it. You get it. That's why you go out. When you're somewhere in two months from now in, in the middle of the Southeast Asia, you're going to be on top of a mountain and you're going to go, ah, 
Oh I get God. it. <laughs> Those are beautiful places. They have 7,000 islands, Frank, over there. Gee, Se- over that's, 7,000. And if, if you've seen those pictures, water is blue and it's mm. still and it's warm, like in a bathtub. Oh, sounds and it's amazing. Not, if you go to the Pacific Ocean and the, and, the, and the West Coast, you can't swim there. It's water is cold and it's, it's, yep. over there, water is still and there's an ocean. And you just yeah. go inside. It's so clear. It's crazy. I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get out there eventually. My you goal gotta, is to get out there. Gotta check that out. Yeah. Now, Franco, let me ask you about your new book and new website. I know you have a new website, new book. If you'd like to mention that here, please. Yeah, I'm excited about this, Sergey, because it's the big. It's part one of a. Um, the website is part one of a larger project that I'm going to be eventually integrating it with things that I've been. Um, playing with 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 AI, okay, and and so this part one is where I have put all of um, my teachings that have to do with the with the inner child in in this space for people to have access, so they can they can do you know and study it however they desire, whenever they desire, instead of trying to reach me because. It's getting difficult now to to try to do this one on one with people. More and yeah. more people desire this, and so, so what we did was that we also combined that with a community, and it's a fantastic community. It's going to be of like-minded people who are really in a different level of consciousness, who desire so much to share of their experiences. Sergey, there's so many amazing stories out there of people who have experienced so many things that we would call supernatural, but they don't have anybody to talk to or play yeah. with all of this stuff. So we're going to bring all of them together so that they can start to sh- not only share, but when you share, there's a, a, an interchange of codes and activations yeah. and integrations and expansion of consciousness. So we're going to be inviting people to the to to be a part of this community and it's very mystical it's very magical it's combining mysticism with um with ai intelligence yeah. it's going to be extraordinary and yeah. it's i believe going to um take us what it's going to do sergey is it's going to allow people to experience a lot of the 5d mysticism in 3d re, in what we will call 3d reality and allow them to bring that energy into this world and that's going to and that causes some huge 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 activations in 3d so it's it's pretty exciting and then the book is going to it's going to it's going to be ideally i was just actually writing a a chapter um this past week and i like to believe it's going to be out by the beginning of next year and it's going to be called the modern day alchemist and it's going to be the art or the science or both of how we are going to use our minds when we get into high levels of 4D and 5D, when we start to realize that significantly that we are really the creators. It is truly, no pun intended, mind-blowing. It's going to be amazing. Did you mention the website or not? Oh, yeah. And the website, (laughs) Sergey, is uh, the website that's going to be active um, as of October 15 is francoromero.com. So really easy. FrancoRomero.com. 